Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all keeping well. It's Sunday evening and we've just come back from a long walk because it's been such a lovely day today. The sun has been shining and the air outside is feeling warmer and it's really feeling like spring now. This video is actually a lot later than it was meant to be. It was supposed to be released in December, but my dad was taken ill at the end of November and got really bad throughout December, so a lot of my everyday life was put on hold for a while. He's 81, so it was quite worrying. He started to get a really bad chest infection in November that wouldn't clear up from two lots of antibiotics, and his breathing got worse and worse, to the point where it was struggling to walk a few metres in his house without getting really badly out of breath. I was constantly on the phone to his doctor trying to get something done to help him and he then eventually got referred to a lung specialist. He had a CT scan on Christmas Eve and from the scan they found that he had a lot of scarring on his lungs. He's slowly improving from when he was at his worst so that's really good but the scarring that he has on his lungs is permanent and it causes a lot of difficulty with his breathing. They still don't know what could have caused it and most of the time there's no reason. But he's now been referred to a different hospital that specialises in his condition and we've been told that they might be able to give him medication that will slow the scarring down. So I don't know if it's just me but when bad things like this happen I get really bad anxiety and I can't do any normal day to day things from just constantly worrying and getting upset all the time. My daily routine gets knocked off track and it takes me a good while for my anxiety to go away and to get back to being myself again. So now my dad is getting sorted and I'm starting to feel a bit more positive and I slowly started getting back to doing things I enjoy at the beginning of February. I've been doing some decorating in our house and I've spent time doing art again, just practicing with my gouache and painting landscapes, so that's been nice. So this insect that I'm drawing here is an earwig. This is the common earwig, and in the UK we have four species of earwig. They're only little things that grow to about one and a half centimetres long, which is just over half an inch, I think. They are flat bodies and have pincers at the hind end. If the pincers are curved like the one that I'm drawing, then they're usually male and the females have straighter pincers. When I was little I used to think that these were called eerie wigs. I'm sure I'd heard other people call them that and that's where I'd got the idea from. I remember at the end of the day we'd go into the garden to collect clothes from the washing line and you'd find these in the clothes once you brought them into the house. I don't often see them much anymore though. They're nocturnal insects, so that's probably why we'd find them if we brought the washing in on a night. It seems silly now, but I actually used to be scared of these because I thought they crawled into your ear, which isn't true. They're just like dark crevices to hide in, which is why the bodies are flat, so they can fit between rocks and behind bark or under plant pots, that sort of thing. I think if there's things like certain animals and insects that you dislike or were scared of as a child, it can be really helpful to learn about them and it makes you see them in a different light and respect them more, especially when you read the myths versus the facts. Nowadays, if I see insects in the garden, I love watching them, especially ants. They really fascinate me and I think they're so clever. My sister, she's got ants in her garden and she can't stand them. She's always putting powder down to try and kill them and I, I keep telling her that they don't do any harm and she just needs to leave them alone but she just can't stand anything like that. We recently found a pair of brown rats living in our compost bin at the end of the garden. I sent her some pictures on um, WhatsApp of them when we found them and she just sent a message back saying oh my god that's disgusting but they're just little rats they're really cute actually we originally thought they were mice because they are only a little but they're definitely brown rats i'm loving watching them and i look out for them every day whilst we've had some snow they haven't been out as much but they usually come out about dinner time that's when we did start seeing them and then they'll stay out for about an hour and then they'll go back to bed and they'll stay in bed for most of the day and you don't see them again. So they're not a problem to have around. 
I think the female, she might have had some babies. So we'll wait until we see the babies out and about so we know that they're old enough to survive and then we're going to try and discourage them from living in the compost bin and try and shoo them away or something. Because the compost bin needs turning often and we can't do that if there's rats living in there, especially little babies that have just been born because it'll kill them. So we can't disturb it at the moment. So we need to wait until we see the the little babies and then we can try and shoo them away and um, maybe he's put some chicken wire around the compost bin or something so they can't get back in there. I'll give you one update on them in my next video if anyone's interested. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching me draw this little ear wig. Let me know what you think of it and if there's any insect that you were scared of when you were younger that you're not scared of anymore, let me know about those. My next and final insect is a shield bug. Hopefully I'll be uploading it next week, so keep a lookout for that. And I'll speak to you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.